And finally, today is the day where we finally compare a bunch of different XLR microphones to each other. And these all have been microphones that I have reviewed in the past, both condenser and dynamic microphones. And these were the ones I was able to get my hands on, uh, but it's sizable enough to offer some variety and hopefully we can decide on which may be best for you. So let us go ahead and dive right in. For more great content just like this, just make sure to subscribe and then turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. Also, leave a like and a comment down below with all of your thoughts on this video. And while you're at it, I always leave affiliate links down below in the description as well. But make sure that you check out Lusterbill so you can find the best deals on all of that tech that you're shopping for. It's a simple browser extension that helps you make the best purchasing decision. And lastly, don't forget to check out my merch store if you're into some monochrome clothing like everything I'm wearing right here. So with that said, links to everything down below. First off, I would like to begin by introducing every respective microphone and then we're going to be doing a bit of a sound test. So first off, we're going to have the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is actually a very popular XLR condenser microphone that is quite small and had a myriad of affordable accessories made for it from third parties and this is a side address microphone built entirely out of metal though it is more so on the light side and you're definitely going to feel that as soon as you grab it this one retails for only around 100 dollars usually for a little bit less and the blue ember is yet another affordable condenser xlr microphone but this one is actually quite special it's built incredibly well and it's definitely on the long side of things so finding a, a position for it in general can be a little bit awkward However, this one is easily built better than the AT2020, in my opinion, and is also side or front addressed, depending on your persuasion, I would say. This one also retails for around $100. And now, th this is going to be the last condenser microphone of the bunch, and this is going to be the Movo VSM7. This microphone is built incredibly well, constructed of metal for, for the entire body, and it is front or side address, again, depending on how you see it, or your persuasion, and it's got a switch for switching between polar patterns, there's a switch for activating a negative 10 dB, or switching it back to 0 dB, and another one for changing the frequency response on the fly. It also comes with a pop filter, a shock mount, and even its own XLR cable. It's a great package, and it all comes in at just $100, or around so, I should say. And next up is going to be a dynamic microphone, and this is the Rode PodMic. I do have a certain fondness for this microphone because for the price, you do get a very heavy and strong microphone in general. It's built much better, in my opinion, than the other $100 solutions I've mentioned thus far. This microphone comes with a shock mount already attached and very good at avoiding resonant frequencies and things of the like. This microphone is going to be addressed from the top and it's worth about $100 retail. But from here, the prices are going to start to go up and the first one is going to be the MXL BCD-1. This is going to be another dynamic microphone that does have a built-in shock mount and it does come in a very lovely package with a very lovely box. Pretty lightweight though, it is still built out of metal and this is a pretty nice looking microphone in general. Though there's one annoying issue with the mounting system and it's that it's very easy to overpower with just the XLR cable so it just kind of ends up dangling and it never stays in one position as you would want it to. And the microphone is usually going to retail for around 150 bucks so you can somehow find it for a little bit cheaper like around 136 or so on. And next up we've got the Rode Podcaster and this is a much more popular microphone for podcasting and the like. It's a dynamic microphone that is also built incredibly well. You can definitely feel the heft on this one, and it's quite the build for sure. It's addressed from the top like most dynamic microphones, and it retails for around $230, I would say, give or take. And next up, we've got the Electrovoice RE320. This is going to be maybe not quite as good as its bigger brother, the RE20, but I don't currently have access to the RE20 at the moment, so we're going to have to do this competition without it. Now this is going to be a dynamic microphone that is also going to be addressed from the top and this is a pretty large microphone and does look really cool in my opinion though it is not built as well as a podcaster in my opinion again the housing does seem to be a little bit thinner i've criticized this microphone before for not doing well with resonant frequencies 
due to its thinner housing, yeah, but it does sound pretty good nonetheless, I would say. Usually with microphones like this, you will get switches for changing a frequency response on the fly, like having like a bass roll off and things like that. And on this one, there is your usual flat mode and you're going to find a kick drum mode as well. So, so you can switch between those. And now I don't have any kind of musical instruments, so we're not going to be doing a test with those. However, this microphone is going to retail for around $300. And next up is another favorite of mine, and this is the Audio-Technica BP40. This is a dynamic microphone with some good heft to it, but it's really not quite as large as some of its competition, though larger than some of the cheaper microphones for sure. It is addressed from the top as well, and just like the RE320, this microphone is going to have a flat mode switch for its standard profile and a bass roll off so that the bass and your voice can actually roll off more smoothly if you have too much of it, which this microphone will give you quite a bit of, by the way. However, this mode doesn't benefit everyone, and it's strongly dependent on, on the person's voice for the most part. So this microphone, by the way, is going to retail for around $350. And now we're going to move on to our final contestant over here. So lastly, here we have the Shure SM7B. And this microphone is built incredibly well for Shure, and already has a built-in pop filter, and the best one in the business because it's outside of the microphone's shell, so you do not need a pop filter with it, since it's already got a great one built in, or I should say built outside of it. It does have this exposed cable, which I have expressed my annoyance towards for, and the past though it does have a pretty good shock mount i would say for the most part since and the connections actually go through it it is just a very well designed microphone minus that exposed cable that i just mentioned and this one is also going to offer the most customization as it does have two switches for you to change the frequency chart on this microphone on the fly or whatever frequencies you would like it to favor without needing any kind of any kind of interface that has to do that for you and this microphone as amazing as it is is going to retail for only 400 dollars which is actually a very good price for a microphone of this caliber now i'm going to run a few tests with these mics in order of prices and first is going to be a test of what each microphone is going to sound like completely unfiltered through my go xlr audio interface and then we're going to have a sound rejection test with a very loud ac and then finally we're going to have a test after taking each mic through the eq where we're going to work around on the highs lows mids and with compression as well and this is going to be the case for every single microphone now the goal for each mic is just to make them sound as good as possible with my own voice and as you might be able to hear i do have a deeper voice so this may or may not apply to you just as a heads up and then let us go ahead and begin and the first test is going to be with our first 100 dollars microphone and in this case that is going to be the audio technica at 2020 you would you would normally see me use this microphone with its other accessories that don't come in the box you have to buy them separately so i'm using this completely raw because of that because it, it it doesn't include any of those other accessories in the box such as a shock mount or pop filter or anything like that and since this is a set address microphone this is pretty much how i'm speaking into it this is it's going to be a condenser microphone as well so i do have the plus 48 volts button turned on on my go xlr and and this is going to be the unfiltered test and this is just what the microphone sounds like with my voice without any kind of enhancement of any kind and that it's flattest setting possible so 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 these are the results that you should be getting with the audio technica at2020 and then next up, right now you're going to be listening to the Blue Ember microphone. This is also going to be a condenser microphone. And this microphone, in my opinion, does sound pretty good for the most part. And it does give you a pretty good sound, I would say, regardless of what kind of voice you have. I don't think that this is too, spe too specific to any particular individual or anything like that. I do believe that this microphone overall is just a pretty good microphone as is and it is going to be front address or side address just depending on your persuasion as you can see that i'm speaking into it even though it is very much at a very awkward angle at the very least it might appear that way but this is what this microphone sounds like completely unfiltered without any kind of enhancements or changes to the sound while going
going through my GoXLR. And now this is going to be a sound test with the Movo BSM7 condenser microphone. And this is, again, going to be a pretty fantastic option for a lot of you who are on a budget. And the reason why here I am actually using a pop filter and the shock mount is because both of these are going to be included in the package. And since they already come in the package, I mean, I mean, you might as well use them because they can really only help you along the way. So I'm using them right now as I'm speaking directly into it, which is why this microphone in particular is doing so well when it comes to plosives and that sort of thing. It's going to be mostly because of this pop filter right here. So I would say that it is overall doing a pretty good job. Right now I have it in its cardioid setting since you can change the polar pattern. I have it at zero and decibels, not at negative 10. And I also have it over on this side at at its flattest setting as well so here you're getting the absolute flattest sound that you can with this microphone and now this is going to be a sound test using the rode pod mic now this was the first dynamic microphone that i introduced here in this video and this is going to be the one that is going to be starting off at just 100 dollars this microphone, in my opinion, is really great, and I think that it's very well suited for podcasts, which is exactly what it is intended for. However, like you could use it for things like, like live streaming and other types of content creation just fine because this microphone does sound really good. And because it is a dynamic microphone, it is not going to require the plus 48 volts of, of phantom power. And also, it's just going to do a better job overall at rejecting other kinds of sounds. However, this is what this microphone sounds like. While I'm just directly speaking into it, this this microphone is going to be addressed all the way from the top, and I'm speaking into it completely unfiltered, and this is what it sounds like completely flat out of the box while plugged into my GoXLR. Now this is going to be an audio sample while using the MXL BCD1. Now this microphone again is around 150 bucks, and from what I'm hearing, honestly, it does sound a little bit tinny to me, at the very least when I'm hearing it back into my ears. This is going to be the flattest configuration possible, and uh, I'm honestly quite surprised that this thing is actually holding up. It's just fine, like with the XLR cable connected and everything, even though I feel like any moment it is going to come right back down because it does have the tendency to do so since it doesn't have the, the strongest shock mount ever. And this is a fairly lightweight microphone after all. So this is what it would sound like. It's the flattest configuration. And I am using the windscreen with it because it came with the windscreen in the box. So, so you know, like I might as well. If it doesn't make you have to buy anything else additionally, then I would like to include it in the package as well because it's, I mean, it's only fair. This is what it would sound like completely flat. No enhancements or anything like that while connected to my GoXLR. And now this is going to be a sound test with the Rode Podcaster, which is going to be a microphone that is specifically made for podcasting. And, and I have to say that right out of the box, as is, it does honestly sound quite good. And it doesn't even really require all that much gain in order in order to get it to work properly or to sound adequately loud. And if I'm honest, like right out of the box, this sounds pretty darn good as it is. Sure, it can sound a little bit better, I'm sure through like EQing or anything like that, but we will take care of that in just a bit. And I also want to see how this microphone handles external noises and the AC, those sorts of circumstances. However, we are going to move on to those tests very shortly, but this is going to be a test with no kind of enhancements of any kind and this is going to be with the Rode Podcaster, the $230 mic in this lineup. Now this test is going to be with the Electrovoice RE320 and this is going to be the little brother to the RE20 which is a really amazing microphone and while I do much prefer the look of this microphone for sure, I like this microphone, it's absolutely beautiful and, and it does even have a switch for switching between two uh, two different frequency responses or i suppose fre frequency graphs i do have this microphone in its flattest setting possible and even so on the eq i just have it completely flat and i would say that as is th this microphone does actually a pretty good job at rejecting sound from what i can see and it even does a better job than the rest of the other microphones that I have tested, even though there isn't really a ton of noise right now, just considering that even the AC is actually turned off, but, but we are going to do a test with the AC turned on. It's still doing a pretty good job, and I would say that as it is, it does already sound pretty good. It might be just a little bit too mid-forward, maybe, and sibilances might be a little harsh on it as is. However, with some EQing, that should get fixed, but we're going to move on to some tests soon. 
And now this is going to be an audio test with the Audio Technica BP40. Now this microphone I've actually been using for quite some time, so I am pretty familiar with this microphone. I actually already have it at its flattest setting possible, and I have to say that at its flattest setting, I can definitely see that how it's not maybe, at the very least, being a great fit for certain types of people, like for people that do have a certain type of voice and that sort of thing, because this is going to be a very mid-forward microphone with some good emphasis on the lows as well as you're going to hear and it's not and it's already not going to pay that much attention to the highs from what i'm hearing when it comes to plosives it doesn't really do all that well on, on its own even though it does have a built-in pop filter already inside i'm holding i'm holding it up like this because i can't actually find the stand for only only the shock mount but i can't hook the shock mount onto this and and it's not really an accessory that's included in the box so yeah this is what it sounds like completely flat out of the box connected to my go xlr no enhancements or anything like that and we're going to move on to a noise rejection test and then we're going to move on to an eq test because i've actually found this microphone to sound pretty good after eqing it so let's go ahead and get into those right now and then lastly, now this is going to be the sound test for the Shure SM7B. And, and now this is also going to be at its flattest setting all the way, e even on the Go XLR, which is the interface this thing uh, connected onto. I honestly think that as is, it already sounds pretty darn good. And it's already pretty, I mean, I, I mean, it's ready for broadcast for sure. I would say that, well, pun completely intended. I do think that this microphone does sound really good as it is right out of the box at its plot of setting, and I wouldn't necessarily make too many changes to it, though luckily this microphone is still very customizable, so if you really wanted to, you could still try and get that, that sound that could better suit you. Now, this microphone, as you may already know by now, is better suited for spoken word applications, and, and it already has a built-in pop filter, which is why it's already doing such a great job at absorbing so much of the plosives and things like that w without me having to try too hard or, or to like watch for any P's or anything like that. I think it just does really well with the built-in pop filter since it's actually showing all the way up out here and it's actually covering the exterior of a capsule which is especially convenient and that's how it should be done on pretty much every microphone. Like I feel like this does make all of the difference. Now we're going to be doing an AC test to see how it handles other kinds of exterior noises and things like that. And then we're going to be doing an EQ test as well just to hear what it sounds like. So we're going to jump into that right now. This is what it sounds like when you try to speak into the Audio Technica AT2020 when there is a super loud AC turned on, and, and this is just kind of like the, the kind of sound quality that you should be expecting out of it, and just how much of that AC it is going to capture, even though the AC is all the way in that corner over there. So these are going to be the overall results. Now let's get into the EQ test. And after doing a little bit of EQing with this microphone through the Go XLR, I did make some changes to the highs and the lows and the mids. I specifically in increased the lows since I did notice that the AT2020 is lacking, that it is lacking a little bit more in that department. I did lower the mids a little bit because it does seem to be more of a mid forward microphone. And I increased the highs at the highest sound, like at the 16 kilohertz range, just a little bit, not too much, just because I wanted to see what kind of sound I, I would get out of it. I increased that deesser all the way up and I did add a little bit a little bit of compression because I felt like that would make it sound a little bit better and I am more comfortable with the sound overall. So this is the kind of sound that you could get if you use some kind of equalizer with it. And then and now we're going to be doing Now this is what it sounds like when you try to talk over the AC onto the blue ember. This is the kind of sound quality that you should be expecting. And through my headphones, through the monitoring, it kind of sounds like it is actually kind of muffling out a little bit more of my voice. So I feel like maybe it's not ideal as is when handling this kind of scenario. However, I would like for you to to be the judge and post since this is really just in the monitoring. When hearing it back, it'll likely sound, sound very different. But now we're going to move on to doing an EQ test. And now this is going to be what the Blue Ember sounds like post EQ. So this is kind of what you should be expecting if you've done things like, let's say, increasing the lows just by a little bit, increasing the highs just by a little bit and around one 
kilohertz range actually ended up bringing that down which is more so around the mid I, I also added just a little bit of compression because I, I feel like it wasn't really really that necessary to add too much I don't think it was too tinny to begin with and I definitely brought that de all the way up and to make sure and that the sibilance wasn't too present however this is the kind of sound quality that you could be expecting out of it this microphone isn't too customizable when it comes to its sound and I think that it is very evident when you listen to it back so this is kind of what you should be expecting here And now this is what it sounds like when you try to, to speak directly into this microphone while having a very loud AC in the room. And this is just kind of and the sound quality that you should be expecting out of it. Now, like hearing it back in the monitoring, it does sound like my voice did get a little bit lower, but also like, like it doesn't really sound all that loud from the side of the AC. I'm not too sure, like it doesn't sound too bad coming back into my ears. So I would say that when it comes to handling noise, this has actually done fairly well in comparison to something like the AT2020, but again, only hearing it back in post is really going to going to tell the true story, I think. So now we're going to move on to an EQ test from here. And now this is going to be a sound test after after going through an EQ in here. All that I pretty much did was just increase increase the lows a little bit and and increase some parts of the highs and like at the lower ends of the highs, like around the four kilohertz and the eight kilohertz. I ended up lowering that and increasing the 16 kilohertz actually a little bit. I left the mids completely flat in this case because I actually do prefer that sound overall. I did add a little bit of compression and I also added that the esser and I brought it up all the way up to 100. So there shouldn't be too much semblance here. And I would say that this is a pretty satisfactory sound. I do like it quite a lot. Honestly, I already like how it sounds a lot by default, like out of the, out of the box, but I think that with an EQ, it can sound even better. And this just makes everything that much more evident. So this is the kind of sound that you could be expecting if you were to EQ this microphone. And now this is what it sounds like when you try to speak into this microphone while there's a super loud AC going on and about in your room. And this is how well it does when it comes to sound rejection. I do think that it does a pretty good job in that regard. And yeah, like I would say, I mean, like just considering that it is a dynamic microphone, it is doing a pretty decent job at rejecting the sound of the AC. At the very least, it's not as loud or as disturbing as it was with any of the condenser microphones that I introduced just a little bit earlier. However, we're also we're also going to be doing an EQ test so that you guys can see kind of what what kind of sound you can actually squeeze out of this microphone. So we're going to jump into that very very soon. And now this is what this microphone can sound like after doing a little bit of EQing. I do think that this configuration does sound a little bit better for my voice at least, even though I wouldn't consider this microphone to be too customizable when it comes to its sound. This is what I was able to squeeze out of it using my GoXLR in a way that I was fairly satisfied with the sound quality overall. So And so essentially what I did here is just that I increased the lows as I usually do. I left the mids exactly at, as they were though. I would probably lower them just a little bit of anything. I did lower the, the highs in some segments and then increase it at around in the 16 kilohertz range. And I do actually kind of prefer the this configuration overall. And I also did add just a little bit of compression because I didn't want to overkill it here. And I like always increased that deesser all, to all the way to 100 so that it wouldn't get in the way of the audio or anything like that. And I am pretty happy with this configuration. And I think that after doing some EQing, it can sound pretty good, but the sound still isn't really all that customizable on this microphone. Like there's only so much that you can actually do with it. And now this is what this microphone is going to sound like when you try to speak over the super loud AC that is going to be all the way on the other side of my room. And the sounds of both are not going to blend together so well so quite frankly I, I don't think that it sounds all that great because this microphone does let in more noise than the Rode Podomatic at the very least from what I'm hearing back right now. I mean on the bright side this one clearly does re require less gain than the Rode Podomatic in order to uh, more functional so I will give it that for sure and now we're going to be doing an EQ test like just to see what kind of sound we can squeeze out of this and it's definitely going to need a de based off of what I'm hearing back over here so let's try and get to that soon. 
soon. Now, this is what this microphone is going to sound like after doing a little bit of EQing. And in this case, I just ended up increasing the lows as I usually tend to do. But I was a little bit more aggressive on, on the lows here because I did notice that just by default, this microphone doesn't emphasize the lows almost at all like when you're just listening back to it it seems to be a very mid forward microphone as well as boosting up the highs it just seems to be that kind of microphone so what i did is just that i increased the lows a little bit more than i would usually and i ended up lowering the mids while leaving the highs exactly as it is i did add a little bit of compression but just a little bit and i definitely cranked up that deesser all the way up i could get a sound that i was a lot happier with and i think that this is a lot better for broadcast situations and that sort of thing and i just think that this uh, that this sound is pretty good overall and this microphone is at the very least more customizable than the rode pod mic in my opinion and i think that it does in a way make it a better buy in that sense but uh, but the pod mic does sound better to me by default in my opinion however a little bit of eqing and definitely ended up uh, fixing some of the issues that i had with this microphone so hey i think it sounds pretty darn good for the money already now this is what it would sound like if i were trying to like speak over an ec or anything like that and how this microphone does handle external noises and having an ac in the room and things like that i i would say that it does a fairly good job at handling that even though the sounds maybe aren't getting blended all that well uh hearing it back and monitoring it does sound a little muddier however that might be completely different in post when, when i'm just when i'm just listening back to it so i think that it is just going to be a matter of like going back and re-evaluating it in that sense like and depending on how you're hearing it you're probably getting the better listen than i am if i'm going to be completely honest here however i do want to do an eq test just to see how that would sound like so yeah let's go ahead and move on to that now this is what the road podcaster is going to sound like after doing a little bit of eqing so, so like essentially i actually didn't really do anything to the lows because they thought that, that the lows were already pretty good on this microphone as they were however you are going to get a lot of close-ups with this microphone which is something that i am noticing hearing back onto my headphones and things of the like um, and I did lower the mids a little bit while just at the highest frequency, which is at around 16 kilohertz, I did end up increasing the highs just by a little bit. However, I, I, I left the highs exactly at zero pretty much ever, everywhere else. And I did add a little bit of compression and I definitely cranked up that de So this is the kind of sound that you could get. Although I'm sure that with a lot more, a more like customization and fine tuning, you can get a bit an even better sound out of this because this is a more customizable microphone overall, even though it's not like super customizable, it's not super malleable. It is still pretty good overall. And I do really like the default sound as it is. So yeah, this is going to be the Rode Podcaster with the EQ test. Now, this is what it sounds like when you try to speak into this microphone over an AC or anything like that, and how it would handle a lot more aggressive sounds, like that super loud AC that I have in the background and things of the like. So, I would say that when it comes to this, it does do a pretty decent job at actually pushing that sound to, to the back, but it does more so sound like you're kind of like outdoors, or, or at the very least, that's just the sound that I'm getting back into my headphones you might be hearing it completely differently however we are still going to be doing a test uh, with just an eq uh, just to hear uh, what it would sound like if you were to add some processing to this and just to make it sound a little bit better and just to see if we can get a, a nicer sound for this microphone specifically for my voice as in the past i have actually struggled, struggled to do so so we're, we're gonna try and do that in just a sec and after doing some eqing here i would say that I've actually gotten a sound that I'm much happier with when it comes to this microphone. I definitely definitely ended up increasing the lows because this microphone does clearly need it. And I brought down the mids some more so that we could try and get rid of those sibilances uh, because those mid frequencies were pretty aggressive on this microphone for sure. And I brought up the highs just a little bit to bring in a, a little bit more, I suppose, uh, brightness to this microphone as well while still making it sound more suitable for broadcast and things of the like i do still think that this is a pretty good microphone overall 
No, this is what this microphone is going to sound like whenever you're trying to speak into it over, over like an AC or, or any other kind of loud noise. I would say that it does actually do a pretty good job at rejecting sound that is not going directly into it, which is really the beauty of dynamic microphones in, ge microphones in general. However, I, I really do prefer the way that this microphone does it over pretty much any other microphone that we have tested so far when it comes to dynamic microphones. I would say that this one does the best job in regards to that. However, we're going to move on to an EQ test in just a sec because that is going to be very important too, and you guys are going to be able to hear a very big difference as well. This is the kind of sound that you can expect if you're doing a little bit of EQing with the Audio Technica BP40. Now, I have become pretty familiar with this microphone, so I already know what this microphone is capable of, and after increasing the lows, de decreasing those emits for sure, and, and even increasing the highs a little bit, I added some compression and I cranked up that de -esser. I would say that this microphone is now ready for broadcast usage, and I'm very happy with the sound as is, even though I normally have it connected to like a shock mount and things like that. And I normally have a pop filter still on it because even when it comes to plosives, it's not necessarily perfect, but it does still do a pretty good job. However, this is what it's going to sound like after doing some EQing, and I think it sounds pretty good. Now we're, we're going to move on to the Shure SM7B and see how that holds up. Now this is what it sounds like when you try to speak into the Shure SM7B when there's like an AC or other types of loud of loud noises around. This is the kind of sound that you should be expecting out of it, especially if you haven't made any changes to this microphone on the EQ or anything like that. I would say that it, it does actually do a pretty good job at rejecting those sounds. And now obviously it doesn't completely eliminate those noises whatsoever, but it does do a pretty good job at rejecting those in comparison to some other microphones and some other dynamic microphones in general that we have tested in this roundup. But now we're going to be doing an EQ test so that you guys can hear what this microphone sounds like when it's been EQ'd and, and just to really see like if I can make it sound even better for my own voice. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Now this is what this microphone can sound like after doing a little bit of EQing. I actually did end up increasing quite a few things. So like on the low end, I did end up increasing it more so on the 30 hertz uh, portion of it. And I did increase it a little bit on the rest of the low end. And the middle frequencies, I did not touch at all like whatsoever. I left it as it was because I, I already thought that it was at a pretty good stage as it was. I did increase the high end a little bit like on, on the 8 kilohertz range. I increased it ever so slightly in the 16 kilohertz just a little bit more just because I wanted a, a little bit more brightness out of it, I suppose. And I did add just a little bit of compression with a de -esser. Even though I don't believe that necessarily having compression on this microphone is a necessity, I think that it does help maybe just a little bit, but I wouldn't really add all that much because this microphone is already so good as it is and I really love how the sound that's coming out of it and I feel like it's already so suitable for broadcast scenarios which is exactly what I would be using it for whether it's for podcasting or live streaming or, or things like that. This microphone already does a very good job. So hey, I mean, I absolutely love it. I think it's great. And so on to my conclusion. I really do think that all these microphones are great in their own way and will work wonders for a lot of, a lot of different types of people. However, if you've got a $100 budget per se, I would go with the Movo VSM7 for your usual YouTube or streaming scenarios or the Rode PodMic mostly for podcasts because it just has a better sound for it in my, in my opinion. I think that the Movo sounds actually better than the Blue Ember and definitely better than the Audio-Technica AT2020, so I honestly have no issues recommending it over those two when it comes to sound quality alone. And already it's a great value since it comes with so many accessories. And if you want a microphone for the looks that maybe you might actually prefer the Blue Ember, it's still a great option, but the AC2020 is honestly my least favorite because it sounds the most hollow to me. And if you want a dynamic microphone for just a little bit more, then the MXL BCD1 is still a great option, but I do prefer the sound of the pod mic for less. So I would still get the pod mic instead if i'm completely honest if your budget is higher though i think that the rode podcaster is an amazing choice for pretty much all purposes and i would even recommend it over the 300 dollars re320 because it's built better it, it is more affordable and it doesn't sound really quite as tinny or at the very least it doesn't carry those resonant frequencies so much i feel like it just does a better job overall 
when it comes to handling sound in general. So the RE320 is still a great microphone, don't get me wrong. I just didn't like it so much for, for my purposes, but it is still worth checking out if you thought that it did sound better than the podcaster or any other microphones and now here we have the bp40 which i think is a really fantastic microphone for 350 bucks however immediately after you listen to it you will realize that it is not for everyone it is definitely a very specialized microphone for sure and speaking of sure the sure sm7b was the best one of the bunch in my opinion when it comes to hardware it's just got an incredible an incredible build it's just designed incredibly well, minus that loose cable that I mentioned earlier that I really don't like. I'm sorry, guys. However, it, it is going to sound incredibly good out of the box. Like, it's already a really good sound. The sound is incredibly customizable, too. So you can really make this microphone sound however you want it to. Though it is going to be pretty gain-hungry in that sense, so you do need a quality interface. I can definitely recommend it if you're not sure. Huh about what sounds you're, you're looking for, but have this budget to spend because you can really customize this microphone to sound however you want and make it fit your voice the best. However, my favorite was actually the Audio Technica BP40 because by default, it, it just works the best with my voice, which is why I, I picked it over the SM7B even though I already have one. And to me, and for someone with a similar voice, this is going to be an amazing microphone no matter what I think. And well, that's been my verdict. I very much hope that this video was helpful to you. I'm going to be leaving affiliate links down to Amazon to all of these microphones. And if I can't find them on Amazon, or if I find them for a very high price on Amazon, I'm going to recommend a different website instead, probably B&H instead, since they also do tend to carry these microphones as well. So do make sure to go ahead and check those out. And if you're interested in any individual reviews for these microphones, I will have them available down in the description as well as I have reviewed them individually, every single one of them. So do make sure to check those out as well. Also, don't forget that I stream on Twitch every Friday and Saturday. And every time that I release a review on a new microphone, I, I'm always going to be streaming from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. If you see on any of my previous videos that it was from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., ignore that because I have changed my schedule now. So it's 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time specifically but do make sure to stop by links to my twitch are going to be down in the description you can also find links to my twitter and my instagram to stay up to date with the latest and greatest regarding the tech summit endeavors but with that said this has been francisco from tech summit hopefully this video was helpful to you let me know your thoughts on everything and if you have any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments below so have a good one and enjoy <laughs>